Welcome to the farm, the educational farm at Jaffa Hill. We are going to go on a pond study exploration now. So this is the entrance at the back of the barnyard to get down to the pond. And so it's a bit of a walk. It's kind of downhill for a long way, but it's worth it in the end. So come on down to the pond. Tell me there. Welcome to the pond at the Educational Farm at Joppa Hill. Um, this pond behind me extends between the town of Bedford and the town of Amherst. And we bring our campers down here every summer to find out more about what's going on in and around the pond because it's an amazing place and it's loaded with living things interacting with one another. In your kit, there is a booklet called Who Lives in the Pond? And some of the things I'm going to show you today that we've scooped out and will scoop out can be found in this booklet. So even if you can't be with us today, which I'm sorry you're not here, when you do get a chance to go to a pond or this pond, you'll have this book to look at and, and identify some of the creatures in there. Let's start with a word about safety though. I'm going to set this aside. Whenever we study a pond, we make sure our parents know about it and hopefully are with us because um, they can help us. This particular pond is a little deep right now. And when we have camp, we say to the kids, ankle deep, ankle deep, and wear boots if you can. Um, my boots are just about ankle deep. And right now the water's a little bit high. Do you need expensive equipment to study the pond? No, you don't. All you're gonna need is a scoop, and this is in your kit, and some kind of white container, just because it helps you see much better the kinds of creatures that you're gonna find, okay? So follow me down to the pond. I'm gonna show you how to use the scoop efficiently, and then we're gonna come back up here and we're gonna look at some of the things that I caught a while ago and um, talk a little bit about them. All right, come on down. Right now, this pond has a lot of pollen on it, so it looks kind of brown, um, and the creatures are all kind of hiding under it. But as you look around, you'll see that there are living things that are outside of the pond, as well as things that we are going to find that live inside the pond. The deer, the otters, the beavers, all of those, the foxes, they need this water, obviously, to drink but there are other creatures that need it for their life cycle so that they can be, um, their eggs are laid in the water, they hatch in the water, and then eventually they turn into adults that fly off, such as a dragonfly, okay? So using this equipment, very simply, there are a couple of things I urge my campers to do. One of them is hold it sideways, scoop along, usually where there's a lot of yucky stuff, because yucky stuff has a lot of good things in it. And then once you bring up the yucky stuff, you examine it. And you look carefully to see what might be hiding in there. Right now in this yucky stuff, I'm not seeing much crawling. So the second thing about all of this work that we're going to do today is patience. <laughs> because you just never know what you're going to find. So I'm gonna take another little scoop over here. It looks a little yuckier. Oh, there's some yuckiness. And I've got some little teeny crawly things in there. I'm gonna put my thumb near a little crawly thing if I can pick that up for you. We'll see one of these in a little while. Come on, baby. I don't wanna hurt it. This is one of those creatures that's the eggs are laid in the water. They hatch into what's called a nymph. And it stays in the water for a while. And when it's time to become an adult, it crawls up. And this one becomes what's called a damselfly. And there's a picture of damselfly adults in that booklet for you. There's a damselfly. And I'm going to put it right back in the water so it's okay. Because it's not ready. It still needs to breathe through gills, so it's not ready to be out in the air yet. 
All right, we'll put that back. And then this final thing I just want to talk about, keep an eye out for frogs and turtles because they're all around here too, is if you come to a place where there are some plants growing, I find it's helpful to scoop along the edge of the plant because sometimes things cling to plants just kind of hanging out, not this time, that you wouldn't find on the bottom, such as water scorpions. They love living along the edge, and I think I just went over my ankle deep because my feet are now wet. All right. Didn't find anything on that scoop, but as I said, it's patience. But you can see all of the other things that might have been in there. So there are plants in there at least. All right, let's go look at some of the things that I caught earlier so we can get a close-up view. Okay, here in this mini pond are some of the creatures that I caught a little bit earlier to show you. Something that we tend to forget about that's really important is the plant material that lives in a pond because it's the plants that gather the sun's energy, converts it into food, and releases oxygen for us as well as the creatures that live in the water. So we have a couple different kinds of plants. This is Elodea, and that's in your in your booklet in your kit. That little plant's called Elodea. All right, but notice all the things that are swimming around here. I'd like to go for one of the bigger ones right now. This is one of my favorites. This is called the nymph of a dragonfly. Does it hurt you? No, not at all. It has a mouth that's underneath its chin. It has this, this little mask and it shoots out its mask and it grabs its food and brings it in. So it's a predator. And sometimes they get so big they can even eat fish. But they don't hurt you. And eventually it will climb up a stalk and it will burst out of its skin and it'll fly away as an adult dragonfly. All right, so some of the others are just a little harder to see. So I'm going to, I have one and don't know if you can see this. I might can turn this, get the ant off. There's a little red guy running around in there. That's called a crawling water mite. And it's a plant eater. Can you see it? Is it, or can I turn it so that it's going to be further out for you? It just seems to be staying away. Again, it doesn't hurt us. It's very important. Eats little little things, eats plants. Um, it's part of a giant food chain of a, of a pond where one thing eats the next, eats the next. So I'm gonna put the little water mite in there. And I'm going to grab one of the larger damselflies. Come on out, little one. There you go. That's a damselfly. It's a cousin of a dragonfly. It's a lot thinner than a dragonfly would be, but they fly all, sometimes they're called darning needles. Can you see that? Okay. All right. And again, I could hold it in my hand. It wouldn't hurt me, but I'm just not going to do that because I don't want to damage it by accident. All right. Another little guy we have in here. <laughs> Oh, the dragon, the damselfly wants to be there. I don't know how to get it out without harming the other. Well, I'm going to show you two things in there then. There's a, a very active little guy in there, and that's called the water boatman. And he swims around like he has oars everywhere, and he's bumping his head into the side. Can you see him? Is that coming in? Okay. So the little water boatman is going all around the damselfly. And then I'm just gonna show two more things for today and then encourage you to come down here sometime and look for yourselves. And this one's, it looks a lot like a water boatman, but it swims upside down. It's in your book, it's called a back swimmer. And it's a predator. It likes to go after eat and eat little things that it could find and catch smaller insects. And eat them. My mom was like,
All right, so the final one, which I don't think is in your book. I'll pick it out. I might have, I can't remember anymore. It's a water, freshwater snail. And they're important because they crawl all over the bottom and they eat algae and they keep the pond clean. And then sometimes other things can eat them. Now on another day, if you come back and visit us here, we'd love to have you or any pond, you might find crayfish. We have crayfish back here. We have freshwater mussels back here. We have frogs back here. But this is just to give you a little introduction to the kinds of things you can do when you go to study a pond. So thank you.